12 and 8. Okay. Yeah. My, a lot of times when you get more used to it, you get even shorter. Yeah. Yeah. Some days. Yeah. Okay. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Redirecting to YouTube. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Some days. Okay, so let me just make sure because I'm hearing it on YouTube too, and I don't want to hear it on YouTube. Because I never do it this way. See if I pause that. Oh, shoot, I don't have my, I thought I had my, uh, my notebook. You want to grab it real quick? Um, yeah. <laughs> Let me look at my phone and see what I see it's doing on YouTube. If you're watching the replay of this, we're having technical difficulties today. I usually use a different tool. So bear with a fast forward if you're watching the replay, because then it's not a deal if you're watching the replay. Uh, you're trying to see if you're live right now? Well, yeah, I'm, I want to see. I paused it on my computer, whether it's actually going or not. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll do the same in live right now. Oh, yeah, so it's working. I, I, I want right. to see. I closed it on my computer. Whether it's working. And let me look at it. Because um, really, the only reason I do this is because it's just a good place to put some content. So, Miss Selena, what's going on since I last saw you? I've changed. Okay. And um, I actually like the way it, it everything's turning out and the way this year's starting. Um, things are looking a lot better. Good. Yeah. So, um, so since we last talked, I um, I said that I was doing something with uh, another girl, like a partnership. Mm -hmm. okay. I remember. So last week, I kind of like separated that mm -hmm. um, to go more solo on it so I can move more freely sure. and, you know, do what I want to do and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty that was pretty good it helped with like the clarity of where in the direction that I wanted to take the brand mm -hmm. um also last year on like the 29th I started with another company I did say I wasn't going to do any um I do a network marketing but that's what they all say <laughs> <laughs> right but somebody showed me the numbers and all you had to do was talk money to me but <laughs> They showed me the numbers and I was like, why, why nobody said anything? Like, cause everybody's in the like, Well, not everybody's in it, but it feels like everybody's in it, but nobody really positioned it the way it was positioned to me. So am I allowed to, am I allowed to coach you right now? Yeah. You said like 17 things that make my alarms go. Ah, 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 ah. Okay. One is I said, I wasn't going to, but I did anyway. Two is they showed me the money. The money means nothing unless it's in your pocket. <laughs> okay, let me be clear. I could yeah. position a presentation for pretty much any company under the sun. In fact, I still have people telling me that the things that I do don't make any money. I'm like, yeah. my bank account says it does. So, so that I'm not. I don't even know what you're in. I don't know who you're working with, so I don't know. I'm just saying. Yeah, I think what they what hey. it wasn't really just the money. It's just that I I I saw it as something I can believe I can do. If that makes okay, sense, no, and that, I, and I actually believe. Too. Yeah, I, I was like, I can do that. And and if any of you guys are watching this, Selena and I spent most of a day together before we know each other. So I'm not. If if somebody else books a one on one, I'm not gonna like go on you. But I'm about to do it to you, young lady. Okay. You need to believe that you can do anything. We got to get you to the place where it has nothing to do with the opportunity. And the opportunity is just you picking what makes the most sense at the moment, as opposed to thinking the opportunity is the thing you can do. That's where we need to get you to. Does that make sense? Now, I've yeah. made a bad selection. I don't know what your selection is. So if somebody wants to go, Diane told her not to, I'm not telling you not to do anything or to do anything. What I'm hearing is your mind and your mind thinks that something outside of you is the key to success. That's why you will partner it up with someone. That's why you're looking at different programs and different things because 
you're looking for something to be the thing or a person to be the person. And none of that will ever happen. And, and, and just so you know, you could be in the right place at the right time and make a lot of money with a program at the right timing. But then when the timing changes, it still always comes back to you. It always comes back to you and your belief in you, who you are, what you bring to the table. And then any product you want to sell is lucky to have you. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a mind shift and I'm, I'm introducing it to you because that's where we want you to go over the long term is to get to a place. I believe that any company I represent is lucky to have. Now, that's not ego. That's not cocky. That's me knowing I work hard. I know my stuff. I've taken the time to learn the stuff and they're lucky to have me. Mm -hmm. And when uh, I'm also a very loyal person, so I'm the type of person that tends to stick around in places, um, but you really have to get to that place. So yeah. I actually feel like I was getting there and that's the reason why I was able to separate myself from, um, from her. Right. Um, Cause I spent all of 2019 just really like meditating and working on my mm -hmm. mindset um, because I knew that that was the issue. Like I knew mm -hmm. it was issues. So mindset is my, was my biggest issue. Mm -hmm. So I worked all year and that's the reason why you was like, I was all over the place really wasn't doing anything. <laughs> Because I was really just focusing on myself and trying to like heal everything and just, Good. you know, yes. move past. And now I do like what you're saying. I do feel a little bit more on that path of Good. being and, able and to you just. You may be in the exact right place. It's just your words are still. I'm working on it. <laughs> whatever comes out of your mouth loops around and goes right back in your two ears. Right. So you have to be super conscious of how you talk to yourself and others. And it's just you and I right now, but you have to be conscious because when you talk, you're talking to prospects too, right? And you're out talking to prospects, the prospects have to lock to you, especially that's what attraction marketing is. It's a prospect locking to you and then joining what you say is where you are. My mentor used to say, people will pay to be your friend. And I used to think that was so horrible when he said it. He goes, no, your energy becomes so strong that people will join whatever you're in. They'll buy your vitamins. They'll buy your this, you'll buy your that to be around you. And that's where we want to get you to. And that's probably not what you wanted to talk about today, but I can't help it. I'm a no, I, I want to talk about wherever, the, wherever your God, my God, our God, whatever. Yeah, your source yeah. leads you. So yeah. because that I, I'm receiving it more of like whatever comes out your mouth is what I needed to hear. So I'm glad you said okay. it because that's the way I like to do things that a lot of people want to do like this, this bullet point, what's the schedule and I'm looking for a download. See, I'm looking no, uh, I think I know what I want to do. Like, so I'm good. Whatever comes out your mouth is what I'm going to receive. Well, then those are the things I was hearing. My, my, my radio was going, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> more than this she's more than this she's more than this and you've been around too long when a new guy says it but you've been around too long so remember if you've selected an opportunity and you've selected the team that you feel really good and comfortable with so that you can shine perfect but it's always going to be about you shining it's always going to be about you shining and think about it you were attracted the guy showed you them, the guy or the girl showed you the money but you were attracted to their confidence in the way they were showing it to you and you mm -hmm. might be in that program before and if i I have a funny feeling I know what program you joined and that's interesting. But anyway, you can tell me later. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you can tell me later. You can yeah. tell me later. Offline. Offline. Yeah. I'm I'm interested. I'm it's interesting too, because I was like not interested at all. Like mm -hmm. I it really I've yeah, probably I've been approached about like, 10 times. I already, I already know what program it is. <laughs> I was like, I was approached about 10 times and I just was not interested. I already know, I already know what program it is. <laughs> I know what program it is. Okay. All right. Okay, <clears throat> I already know which one it is. And you know what? I know people that have done exceptionally well there. Exceptionally well. So um, I know people that have done exceptionally well everywhere though. <laughs> you know? So it's not about, it's never about a pay plan. And this is yeah. MLM dogma stuff. It's never about a pay plan. It's never about your upline. Those things are facets like you know i aligned with a great upline and a good friend i aligned with a company whose products i like you know and, and those are those are really important 
but right. success isn't going to lie in their products because they can change their products or the laws can change or whatever. The success isn't going to rely in my upline because they have, you know, 30,000 people to take care of. Right. Right. And if I'm moving and shaking, they're going to focus in on, on, on dr drilling my lines. If I'm not moving and shaking, I'm just another person, even though they're a dear friend of mine, I'm just another person. And I'm experienced enough to not expect them to pay attention to me if I'm not producing. So, yeah. Really, that's the goal is to get them to pay more attention to me. So the, and the only way you week, get that attention is move. Yeah. So the first week I had um, um, sponsored like three people. Um, and I already hit the first incentive. Bonus, yeah. Yeah. I know exactly what you are. <laughs> Not bonus, but incentive. I know what it is. Yeah. So I was just like, okay. So the next one, moving on. So Good. Good. And, and I feel like I have a purpose now. I'm more of a, like a, a thing, something to work towards and something I feel very confident about, at least, Absolutely. you know, so... I, I do like the shift that I feel like now I have something to work towards before I was just like all over the place. You know what you had to work towards before? And again, I'm going to be that tough mama. <laughs> you had to work towards your family and your son mm -hmm. and, and, and providing for them. Right. The vehicle is, is awesome. And if the vehicle is supportive for you when you need that type of support, the vehicle that you're in, if it's one I think it is, is a, has a very supportive networking um, you know, feel to it. There's a lot of uh, training and support and everything. And if that's the thing that you need to keep you on track, excellent. Plug in as hard as you can. But again, the thing you're working towards, like, and the only reason why I tell you this is because I believed that I was working towards a particular rank at a particular company. And it's all I ever talked about. It's all I ever said. And I, I, I like had vision boards and dreams of of all oh yeah, I'm not trying to get no rank. I'm trying to get the. <laughs> I try to, I try to so, stay home because I'm here for a whole month with no like. They didn't schedule me on the schedule, so I have no work. Wow. So I have to. That's the reason why it's like it's like imperative that I work and make no, this and, work. And you're in a good place because those those upfront incentives actually are pretty decent. When people mm -hmm. roll in the door, they can make some pretty decent money pretty quickly. So, right. Which is so really that. Good. Yeah, that that's job. where I was. That's why I was like, I have to make this work and it has to, like, I have to do it because I'm not going to make any income. That's, uh, so it's just, it's worse than what you had told me when we were together as far as work and. Yeah. That's horrible. Horrible. But, well, good. So then go get this. But remember, keep it in your mind, keep it in your heart. I'm building my skills. I'm a valuable asset. I'm here. I'm going to learn from those that are teaching me. I'm going to keep yourself very focused because it's very easy to get caught up emotionally in, in a company, in, a, in, in this type of stuff. Um, and what you want is to keep your head on straight because you have responsibilities. And I, and I'm talking to you from experience, I let myself get pulled in different directions at different times by uplines and trainings and this, this and that. And I was losing sight of the very thing that I started for, which was my kids being home and the money I needed to make. Um, okay. So really, really, really keep your head on straight. And good, I'm glad that you are free, you know, free spirit right now doing your thing. It's good, it's good. So you got three, which is terrific. What's your goal for the month? Do you have a specific number that you're trying to hit? Yeah, um, a total of 10. Total of 10 that for, for you or 10 within your group? No, for me per, per, personally. Okay. The other thing to keep your mind on, and I'm sure you'll be taught this, is a lot of people, they'll recruit and then they don't work through their people. So when you get someone, especially when they get their products and they're excited about them, that's when we want to see if they know anybody else. Okay. Um, we don't have to get them into the business say, and all this other stuff. And it doesn't, you know, we don't have to convince them of that, but that person knows some people that they'll refer, you know, if you don't hype them up. And so I'm always looking through, um, my guys, I want to see who do they have. Like we have a sample program. So I'm looking to see who, who wants to try a sample so that I can get in and meet those people. Because your leverage is through 
the people. And that's not taught that often anymore. Um, most people, they're looking for leverage in generating more leads or leverage in messaging more people a day or you know whatever processes you guys are using. Don't forget that every person that you have has prospects for you if handled properly. And you need to feel safe, not solicited. You know, they need to feel safe in referring people to you. Not okay. like, you know, you're gonna plow all their friends. Because the one thing everybody doesn't want is anybody plowing their friends and family. But the secret to network marketing is friends and family, especially with what you're doing. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Are the incentives based upon your personal production or are they based upon the group production or volume? Um, the month the monthly incentives, yes, it's based on my personal. Um, mm -hmm. Overall, once I hit a certain um, level, um, then it's based on the, the, the group. Okay. okay. So right now, you know, I, I benefit for, from the new people, but until I hit a certain level, then the whole, then I, I benefit from the whole group. Okay. Okay. So you got to focus front line right now. Very good. Yeah. Cool. So what else is going on? Um, that is a, that's the new thing that's going on right now. Um, other than that, I am, um, slowly, you know, putting out the new stuff with, um, boss moms, like the new branding stuff. Um, you gave me the idea in order to pay for this is to start, you know, sending out, sending out some emails and sending out some, um, I was going to maybe try to do that, like as, um, February's promotion of, you know, promoting like my coaching or not necessarily, yeah, my coaching or help. Um, and, you know, have that be some, some other extra income that will come in to help mm -hmm. me. Yeah. Um, what you want to have at your stage is a specific offer. Like I tend to not have specific stage because people know me. Um, but in your, at your stage, you want to have a, you know, it's whatever it is, it's $97. And during that session, we're going to do this, 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 and this, or you have a choice of three sessions. One is autoresponder setup. One is, you know, I, I don't know what you can teach. Yeah. Um, that's a good idea. <laughs> well, I get what you're saying. So that's, I was like, that's a good idea. Yeah. That's like, let's say it's like 97 bucks and you get this and then give them three choices. Say, or if you'd like all three, it's 247 and sell them free, a bundle. Or what, I'm, and I'm making those price points up. It could be whatever you want. Yeah. Remember that under a hundred bucks, that's when people don't have to ask their mother for permission. If you go over a hundred bucks, they have to start thinking and contemplate and ring their hands and, you know, they have to check with people and all that other good stuff. Right. It used to be 50, but now it's a hundred. <laughs> All right, so 247, Aubrey. That's a, I, I'm making those numbers up. Like I said, I don't yeah. know what you have to offer to show them or whatever. Um, yeah, so I guess I have, to some, I have to get in the office and do that planning because I was I, I was going to make it like open anyway because I really, I really, I know, and this is where I realize where my superpower is, is that I'm, and I wish I could do it to myself, <laughs> but my superpower is, you know, getting on the phone with someone, um, you know, being a great resource because for some reason I'm very resourceful. So I know how to, you know, um, I know you are. People, I know how to direct people where they need to go. And then I'm really good with like motivating them to get off their butt and get something done and doing mm -hmm. something. So that's where I, that's where it was going to be a little open because it would have been more of a strategy session or a, um, a game planning session or something like that to get them moving. You um, have to determine started. what is the outcome. Like these sessions, mm -hmm. do them when I happen to be home because I'm on the road a lot. When I'm home, I do them because one, I like doing them. They're fun. Um, I like being able to touch, you know, the different people around. I also like to see who's excited, you know, who raises their hand. I have a whole bunch of them booked. Um, I also use them as a gateway to other things. Um, not that I solicit anybody, but when I listen to someone, I kind of know what they might need. So. Um, I might show them something else, um, you know, 
an affiliate tool of this or that. So they do become other revenue. And they also become a gateway for um, my protege program, which I don't really advertise. Um, you know, people go, oh my gosh, you know, I, I do this and this and this when I work with you and then I'll, I'll show them if I think they're appropriate. Right. I'm fussy about that because that's that's like being like with me all the time. So I don't offer it like to just anyone. So the reason why I'm showing you this is because you might make them inexpensive because you want it to be a gateway to sell other things or recruit them. Mm -hmm. Okay. And not obnoxiously recruiting them, but recruit them. You know, you might use it as a way to introduce them to something further. So you might do $27 get off your butt sessions and book tons of them, half an hour, get off your butt. And then during the session, the, the follow-up afterwards is here's some other options for you and different things. Mm -hmm. It's just a motivational session. Um, if you like doing them and you happen to be home all month, you might only want to do something at a higher price point because you're actually looking at that to be the revenue. So it, you have to determine, is this the revenue or is this the what we call the funded proposal or the front end offer okay. in the door to take them to other things? Got you. You follow so, that? Yeah. So if I want it to be the, the income source, then I'll make it a higher, pri pri higher price point. But I just right. want it to get, you know, with someone, provide value, but then also have it as a gateway to you know, offer other things, then mm -hmm. it'll be more of like a 30 minute session or could it be an hour? I guess it doesn't matter. Like it depends on me. The point being, you have yeah. to determine what is the outcome. So for example, <clears throat> my my mentor was the, the creator of the funded proposal, which then Mike Diller did in this one, then that one did. He sold a 12.95 two CD set, okay? Mm -hmm because this is back in the day, CDs were much more expensive. So two CDs for $12.95 actually sound exciting, right? And there was no online audio or anything. Mm -hmm. The purpose of selling them was not to make money. Clearly, you know, he broke even on it. And he mailed it out and this is that. The purpose of selling them was not to make money. The purpose of selling them was to generate the lead flow that he then was selling more stuff and turning into affiliates and recruiting into his MLM. So he sold something up front that was inexpensive to then have lots of people to introduce to whatever else he wanted to introduce them to. Um, that's where basically they're paying you to prospect them. The company that I work with has a seven day trial pack of the products. And I loved the concept when I first saw it. And the reason why is one, because a lot of people, they're paranoid, they want to test it, they want to see if it works, you know, if it agrees with them. So it makes them happy. And it also yields a nice retail commission. So basically, people are paying to try my product, somebody will see this and go, that's evil. It's not evil. It's good business. They're trying to try my product. If they like it, we enroll them. If they don't like it, I just made enough money to go out and sell another day. You have to have cash flow. You have to have cash flow. Right. Don't have any cash coming in on a daily basis. So then they're always behind the eight ball. And at the end of the month, they're scrambling like mania, you know, an incentive or make rank or this and that. If you have cash flow every single day, your prospects can tell you're not desperate to recruit. I'm not desperate to recruit anybody. I'm not desperate to sell anyone anything. I'm not desperate to get people to do one of these sessions with me. I'm not desperate to for anything because I have every day cash flow changes your demeanor, your posture. And that cash flow could be with getting a small product, that cash flow could be doing these sessions because you like the coaching. I think you know how I feel about, you know, everybody becoming a coach. I don't mm -hmm. think everybody should become a coach. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that you are good with people and do get them into action. So, you know, doing that type of thing, I do these because I love them. Certainly, I don't do them for the money. You know, I do them because I love them. Um, so that's what you have to think about when you're creating some things. Are they sessions? Are they products? Are they trainings? And what is the purpose? Is the purpose the money or is the purpose to have a relationship with someone? When you have relationship with someone, they trust you. And once they trust you, they'll buy what you recommend. Mm. That makes sense? 
Yes, it is. The speed of trust. Speed of trust. It's everything. And that's what a lot of novice marketers are missing because they're busy trying to sell, 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 sell. They're not building the trust. And then when push comes to shove, they don't have the influence that they want. And that's why people move from thing to thing because they're not influenced by the person who. Okay. That makes sense? Yes. Good. But yeah, for sure, sessions. You're good too, you get jazzed up. Hmm? You get jazzed up when you're doing them if you like the people. Yeah, um, because I always get that from my like friends. Um, Because I'll try to like do something with them because they're trying to, you know, they're in a totally different business or whatever. But I have a a good friend who's my best friend. And I went and did a coaching session with her. I did it for free, of course. But it was just like, after that, she was like, why don't you do this for real? Like, and I'm like, ah, and I wasn't confident at that time. Like, Mm -hmm. I wasn't. So I know that's the reason why I didn't do it. But now that I get it, like, as many times as I have talked to people and now that I'm on the, I'm actually doing work where I'm, pro- I'm actually actively prospecting, which I said I didn't want to do, but mm-hmm. me actively prospecting and talking to people, I realized that I really do have a lot of value to give and people really appreciate when they speak to me mm-hmm. um, and how I'm, you know, I direct them in the right path. And I've had so many people and say, that, you know, you really like try to make sure that everybody around you is, you know, lifted up. And, you and know, that's a, a big part of the secret of prospecting is when you can talk to someone with their best interest in mind and lift them up and then see if they happen to be a match for your program. It's a different vibe. It's a different energy when you're moving from that place. Yeah. And I see that. And that once I start, started seeing that and I was like, act, like the actively prospecting thing, I thought I couldn't do it. Then I was like, oh man, I could do this. <laughs> I realized well, I can because, because it's like because of the way you're doing it. It's yeah. the way you're doing it. Um, when you have to just be a robot and mechanically bug people, um, that's no fun. When you're actually reaching out to people to assist them and you believe in what you're showing them, it's lots of fun. Okay. Lots of fun. Now that makes sense why why like everything it's just a big old shift happened since that's huge. Like since the first or before that's that. Wonderful. <laughs> that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Oh um yeah, so that's when I realized that I can um really offer at least offer that or come up with something I can offer, like you said, be more specific. So I guess the conversation isn't all over the place. And um you know, market that and get some clients to sit down with me so I can generate more income to supplement other things, my non-job that I have. It's so hard to believe because that was such a hot career and they Mm -hmm. did that so much. And that's... Why do you think this, was it just an overpopulation of people with that, with that background that graduated or is it that they, the technology or something has cut back on the need? No, it's oversaturation. Um, they, Florida, I live, I live in Florida for those who are getting a replay. Florida alone um, has seven pharmacy schools and that's like the only state in the United States that have more than one. Most of them have zero or one pharmacy school. Florida has seven and they're pumping out, you know, graduates like that. And then those who are moving, they still can't really find um, work as well because everybody's trying to, you know, figure out where they fit in. Hmm. Um, Interesting. I'm just thinking about the pharmacy schools here. You're right. I mean, like I grew up in New York and I can only think of two pharmacy schools. I'm sure there's more, but because New York's a big state and in Connecticut, there's only one. Connecticut's a little state. Um, yeah, they're just pumping out too many people and then not really, you know, putting us in a position where we can advance and do things on our own. So we kind of like mostly stuck in the institutions like where- It's interesting because that was, it was very hard to get into that field. Um, and I right. get, and decided to capitalize on that and then pumped out too many and wow. And then, and then the industry changed as well. Right. Um, interesting. 
yeah completely changed so uh <laughs> and here you are and that's yeah, okay yeah, because yeah. sometimes maybe the best thing that ha- the worst thing that happens can be the best thing that happens cuz it gets you that motivation you know for me i i um i just needed to do it and i didn't see all the obstacles i don't know why everybody else tells me about all the obstacles and i didn't see any of them I just, I just kept moving forward and looking for a path, you know, like football, you look for the, you know, where's the open, who's open. I didn't sit and go, oh, that guy's blocking over there. I can't, I can't do this. I had the ball. I I, I had to run or throw or, or, throw or whatever. I, I'm not a football fan. You can tell, but mm-hmm. for the opening, I didn't look for where I was blocked because otherwise you might as well just lay down. Right. You know? So largely, if you're where I think you are, the, 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 they're going to be, it's, it's a prospecting, warm market type of thing. Um, so you just have to decide if you want to have something in front of it or whether you just want to stick with the basic plan. Um, you know, I, I see both sides. I see big leaders that that's what they do, period. And I see other leaders with a, with a social media brand out there. Yeah. So I do, so my social media brand now, um, but I spoke to you about it. I told you it was Boss Moms Online, but I had the market or at least the target audience at that time. It was okay, but I wasn't hundred percent feeling it. It wasn't until last week that I realized that one, I realized that I'm actually a stay at home mom. <laughs> I wasn't really thinking about it. <laughs> like, even though it's like, even though I worked um, last year, maybe worked once or twice a week or something like that. I just thought, I just didn't consider myself a stay at home mom, but then I realized that I am. And I'm like, oh, and then as time went on, I realized that a lot of stay at home moms are trying to figure out how to make income from home. So now it's more of like, my brand is Boss Moms Online, but I talk to single stay at home moms to help them make full-time income. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of like where I'm going with that. Cool. And I, yeah. And I actually like it. And I feel like it's it's more targeted. So I'm really talking to them, you know, and I'll probably have more people reaching out to me. Um, I've done a post, like a curiosity post for stay at home moms and had like almost 60 hits. I've been yeah, still following up with these people. <laughs> Let me, I'm going to give you a little bit of advice from my perspective being a, a mom that stayed home, et cetera. When everybody started to learn about marketing, which I don't know, I, I think, I'm not sure whether it was a good thing or a bad thing for the industry. Everybody started to think about, you know, their, their unique selling proposition and their targeted market and all this other stuff. And the reality is I just always looked for people that related to me or that I related to. I didn't worry about too much about a brand or a category or uh, all that type of stuff. I was just out there looking for getting into conversations with other people that were like me. Um, The truth is at the time, I didn't very much relate to the stay at home moms, most of them, um, because I was ambitious and I'm not saying the stay at home moms aren't, but I, I had this drive in me, but I had a drive to be with my kids. And a lot of the moms I was meeting, they wanted to bake cupcakes and stuff. And I'm not trying to diminish anybody because I honor that. But yeah, I knew somebody like me that stay at that, home trying to like move. Right. That, so that wasn't me. So when I, if I tried to focus solely on that population, even if I recruited them, they didn't really want to go for it. Um, so I never much worried about trying to put a box around it. I just more focused on who could hear the song I was singing, um, who could, who heard the message. And I just started writing and pumping out a lot of content. This is back in the day when it was pretty rudimentary and people just started showing up. Now there's a lot more noise today. There's a lot more people, everybody's making content, but in reality, not that many people are. Because if you, you think and just look around the industry, I can only think of two dozen people that really have anything strong or consistent going on. I can think of thousands of people that I see on Facebook and the internet and now TikTok and 
whatever all day long. I can think of thousands of people that I've seen around. I can only think of a dozen to two dozen people that have anything real happening. And the difference is simply the consistency of message and the diligence. Think about it. When you think about people that you know in the space that are known names, how many can you name? Not that many. If you really think about it, if you were to sit and take a piece of paper, I dare yeah. you to it later, take a piece of paper, write it down, write down who are the people that have it. There's not that many. Then think about what's the common denominator because they're all different personalities. What's the common denominator amongst them? Mm. What gives them influence? Why do they have that audience? Why do people listen to them? Um, some people have a smaller audience, but a much more loyal zealot fan base. Some people have a huge audience. Um, so that can vary, but what's the secret sauce? What, that's what I always do is I look at all these people and I go, well, what do you have in common? What do you have in common? Um, and then that's where you focus. So when you think about the biggest names, their brands are usually their name. Yeah right? Because they're not limiting themselves to an audience. I'm not saying to changers, it's fine. No, I, I brand myself as Dr. Selena Baker yeah. with Boss Moms Online. Yeah. Like, Which is cool. yeah. yeah, cause I just was like, yeah. in case I decide to like, whatever. So yeah. Everything, yeah. everything is labeled with my name. It just mm -hmm. that the logo. I know, I know that. Yeah, I know, uh -huh. I know that. I'm just trying to get you to see and look around. Yeah, I noticed that. That's when I was like, oh, I got to do it this way. <laughs> Yeah, my name is out there. Is the home business industry is like the weirdest industry. I've never been to, I, I go to so many events and there'll be such an eclectic crowd together. People that we, you would never see together. Anyways, mm -hmm. like my favorite story. And if I told you, stop me, but we were in Jersey uh, and, my, and a workshop with my mentor. And um, we were in the lobby of the Newark Hilton and I looked over and I said, oh my God, look at that woman's beautiful hat. And it turned out to be my mentor's friend who's a pastor of an African-American church, very prominent church in Newark and his wife. And she was, she had on her, you know, her church hat. Mm -hmm. Saturday, they had some type of event going on in the hotel and they invited us down to church the next day. So we show up, we're in inner city, Jersey. It's me, Joe, so me, middle-aged white lady, Joe, middle-aged white guy, uh, a six foot four Filipino, a Mexican. Uh, <clears throat> I forget, there was like a bunch of us and they keep the doors locked um, just for safety. So we ring the doorbell, guy comes to the door and he just looks at us. And, and I said, hi, how are you? Good morning. I said, we're friends of Pastor Francis. He invited us down. Well, as soon as we said that, they ushered us right into the front row. But everybody was like, mm -hmm. people, because it wasn't any particular kind. We, we were just like a mix. Mm -hmm. And it was because we're all from this industry and we all have these same ideals and thoughts and, and they transcend race, region, color, religion. They transcend everything. And that's what's so cool. And you look at the bases of most of the people in the industry, they have such eclectic mixtures. Mm -hmm. So I've always shouted out to mothers, but I, I won't only do mothers. I've always shouted out to the dreamer or the oddball, because I feel like an oddball, but I won't only talk to them. I've shouted to uh, professionals, educated people that want to leave their job because they're in prison, you know, because that was me, all of those things. So just keep that in mind as you move forward. This mm -hmm. industry attracts a certain kind of people. Mm -hmm. They're not defined by the way most people want to define people. Okay. There's a huge number of people with uh, attention deficit and learning order uh, disorders. You'd be stunned if you surveyed them. Um, there's a huge number of people that um, have some type of situation that keeps them <clears throat> from being in a regular job. Um, there's a huge number, highly intelligent people though, highly intelligent people. There's a huge number of people that are um, they're just different. They just don't fit in. 
Um, obviously there's mothers that want to be home. There's retirees. There's all those segments. Um, but I find the biggest one is the people that just can't sit in a normal environment. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's hard to define them because each one's unique and different. Right. Yeah. My phone is going wild and that's rare. I have this turned off, but I have the things from the other room from my iPad. It's all good. Um, so for you, how are you generating the leads? Or are you just going out and locating people that you know, or what are you doing right now? Um, for the opportunity, I have been just going through like, people that I know, but then I also put out some curiosity posts that, um, that then that generated like 60 leads in one day. So, um, and I'm still following up with them. So that's pretty much what I'm doing is putting posts out there. And then anybody who is like, who I know what likes me a lot, those are the ones mm -hmm. that I'm like reaching out to. Mm -hmm. And okay, so what's my biggest right advice? Now. What's my biggest advice I always give that I'm going to give you right now? Um, this is a warm market. <laughs> yeah, but what what do I what do I what, what am I a, a zealot about? Oh, email. Yeah, putting them on the email list. I don't care if it's email, a Facebook group, uh, Manny chat. I don't care. But you need once you have a touch with them. You need to, the first thing you want to do is invite them into something. Yeah. Continue to have conversation with them. Okay. If you go in and you prospect and you get a no, it, become, it starts to become awkward to go back to them. If you go in and you first say, hey, I have a great newsletter. I'd love to put you on it. And then you go ahead and you invite them to the presentation. Mm -hmm. It's not the right timing for them. They're still in your newsletter. Okay. Yeah, and that and and I was trying to well because I just like I said I just started like at the beginning of the of this month, so mm -hmm. I was trying to come up with like a funnel or something to give them the information. Don't, but don't those, complicate it. <laughs> that's what I was trying to do. I was just like, okay, let me put something together where they put their email in there so they can get that video that they asked. No, for. in fact, if if you're where I think you are, they they don't like that at all. Um. Yeah. No. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I was trying to figure it out. But they it wasn't gonna be like the video next. It was gonna be me, like a bridge with the mm -hmm. like a link with the private like password type no. thing. Like they have to click the, yeah. the link and put the password in. But yeah, so, you know, I would be I would be all for like especially when you have 60 responses to send them something over to see a video and meet you to use leverage of that, mm -hmm. but that would have them reaching out to you to get the formal presentation. I wouldn't for that company. For other companies, I would automate the whole damn thing. For your company, if it's where I think you are, why don't you send me a message on Facebook right now and tell me? Okay, yeah, because see, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking, I was thinking that the only way I could do it is just to, you know, have them put the email, have a bridge page, to tell them why I'm excited, blah blah blah, and then have them click. Because it seems like so far that company is okay with you sending out a video that is password protected. So I thought that if I had the video mm -hmm. at the bottom and told them that you know use this password that it should be enough but if you have no way of tracking to see who watched it that kind of leaves you without being able to see what's going on so i know i meant i meant the people who um who i talked to like how i'm doing it now because i don't have anything set up and nobody in the team has anything set up they're just mm -hmm. they're talking to them and then they send the video with the password Mm -hmm. or whatever so it was almost kind of like i was doing the same thing huh well they know who it is if, if if you talk to me and i said sure i'll take a look you know that you gave it to me right that's what i meant like that's how i was gonna do it i wasn't really gonna automate it where it's like out there and, and we don't know who's watching it was gonna be like how i'm pro like how i'm prospecting now and how they asking for it i kind of mm -hmm. was trying to you know, give them something that showed me because they, because these people that are um, reaching out to me, they don't know me. Yeah, no. So, so I got to get them locked to you, especially right. if you learn the name of the company, they can go Google it. So it's a great idea to get them locked into you and get them opted in. Okay. And so. either personally give them that link or however you want to do it. Mm -hmm. but, um, 
you want them knowing you. Okay. Knowing you. So, so I got questions about that because now, cause I'm like, I'm in a, so since I kind of just started and then I did that post and I've been following up with people or whatever, mm -hmm. um, it wouldn't, even though they asked me for the information, it's not, is it appropriate? Am I still trying to like give them the information right then? Or am I trying to still ask, yes. like start conversations, do the most, you yeah, know? It's everything to do with how you position things. Okay. Means everything. See, I never go out and try to get somebody to ask me about my opportunity because I want them connected to me. I want them opted into me first. Now, again, what you're doing right now, and especially with your starting and the incentives, I would go direct, straight. I would go straight right now. Right? Yeah, because that's where I'm at. Because I know I'm trying to like build that that front line, like yeah. you said, so I can start yeah. helping other yeah. people. Yeah. But I know I need to build that yeah. first so yeah. I can. Yeah, I would, I would do traditional right now. I would not overcomplicate it. See kids, if people think sometimes I, I take people down a different road. When, guess what? When I got involved in an MLM again, what did I do? I went to my friends and said, hey, I'm doing this. Do you want to take a look? That's what I did. I didn't go to, I didn't run an ad. I didn't create a funnel. I still don't have a funnel. But what happens over time is, um, once you get going and you got that that foundation built, you got 25 people or so, now you need to start to create some tools or different ways to leverage because your team needs you and you need to do your production. Right. And that's when something like that could be helpful. Okay. So right now, now building up a building that building a, a a funnel wouldn't be something I need to be doing. I just I need to focus on get the the now when somebody asks me for information, I generally I want to control the conversation. So I'll, I'll message them back and I'll go, so Selena, you know, tell me a little bit about yourself. What are you looking to, you know, what are you looking to accomplish? I'm going to ask you a few questions because I want to- Before you give the, the video. Yeah, yeah oh, I want to see one. I should have did that. Do, I, do, they, do they even, can they even hold a conversation? Do I even want to recruit them? And if not, maybe, maybe I find someone that's okay. I'm going to toss them off to one of my team members or something. Um, I'm moving where I'm sorting these people. Again, I'm the treat. They're lucky to work with me. And okay. I mean that from an ego-based thing, but I'm not desperate to get them. I want to know what are they about? Who are they? What attracted them to the post? But I don't ask it in this weird, awkward way. I also like to look at their profile and see what do we have in common? You know, like um, if let's say you message me or you ask for information, I'd go over to your profile and I I I probably find something about your son or something. You know, not that I'm looking for that, but it's there. You, you know, usually a family stuff or whatever. And I'd be like, oh my gosh, your son's so cute. How old is he? And I do that before we got into here's the link. Once I got you talking about your dog, your cat, your whatever, then I'd be like, okay, so so what made you respond to the um, the post? What are you looking to accomplish? And then let them answer me. And then I go, mm -hmm. awesome. Well, what I have is a 15 minute presentation. I'll go over everything. When do you have time to look at that? Um, I'll get you, I'll get that over to you and then let's connect right after. So what I want to do is pin down a time that they can watch it and a time to talk to them right afterwards. Okay. Uh, Follow okay. the training that they're giving you. That's the way I was trained. It could be slightly different. Yeah, it was so no, it's almost like just get it done. <laughs> So it wasn't like, I don't have like a, I just kind of just went with what I think should happen, but the new, I, I never tried the whole curiosity post thing. So these are new people, mm -hmm. like the people that I know, I know how to talk to, but these new people, I wasn't sure, but I was like, well, since you just asked me the information, I'll say, how are you? You answer back. Then I'll tell them, uh, Hey, I got this, um, video that's this many, many minutes long, which when will you have a chance to look at it? But mm -hmm. in your way, you're saying like, you know, build up a little bit, rapport more, build, build up rapport yeah. a little bit and then just, send the video. And I'm looking for whatever we have in common. Like, like, I'll be like, oh my gosh, you, you grew up on Long Island. I used to be on Long Island like every other week or whatever we have in common. It has to be sincere. It can't be, I can't be just like a lot of people teach you to pay them a compliment or something. And I think that's weird. If, if, if I don't like something, I'm not going to tell you that. If I like your eyelashes, I'm going to tell you I like your eyelashes. If I don't, I'm not going to say it for the sake of saying it. 
whatever the case, I'm looking for the thing that we have in common or that we agree upon. That thing yeah. is the bridge. That okay. Bridge. So for example, well, I got some strangers because one stranger, I, I signed up one stranger. Awesome. And then, I mean, we never taught whatever. It was just fast. Like, and I did the way I did it where it wasn't that the port rapport wasn't built up like that, but started them up. I got someone else that's asking me what's next because they already saw the video like just now. So, um, so then it's just terrific. It, yeah. That. So I was just hoping that they were seeing my stuff and seeing that I was like, you know, Maybe actively. Maybe the presentation is so damn good that it's closing them, which is, which would be spectacular. Yeah. And signing them is just the beginning. It's, <laughs> it's grooming. It's and so I don't, I don't, <clears throat> how much do you make when you sign someone? Not that much. Yeah, it depends like what what they sign up with, but the one that we try to get people signed up with is $75 per per person. Right. So you make 75 bucks. And 75 bucks right now you need because you're not working. Right. But 75 bucks in the big picture is not a lot of money. So no. what I want is the residual right leverage. Okay. I want the money that comes month after month after month after month. I have right. Remember today, I was joking about it. They've been a customer of mine. Yeah, I need my calculator for a minute. And then I have to run because I have all, more back-to-back -back appointments. So crazy busy in a good way. Um, that yeah. is good. Kind of I'm now I'm thinking like I should have just got off the last call, but it was a working call. It was a pros it was a Zoom prospecting call for the team which I, I do appreciate. They just started doing that. And I said, I appreciate that for my new people. Right now, I kind of don't need that motivation only because I'm already motivated. <laughs> this person so. on monthly is alone, $7,200 plus all the other stuff they bought. They probably were a $10,000 person. Mm. And um, so it's been all this time. It's, you know, I always wish them to go in peace and blessings, of course, but that's what I want. I want $10,000, not $75. Right. There's a science to getting the longer money and the shorter money. And that's what you learn with experience, with experience. Um, and that's why I want to control the, I mean, I think you should go put in your 10 people and just do it. Like go gangbusters, just put them in. That's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> get a little bit more skilled in the third month, get a little more skill. So do not you keep hearing me say, don't overcomplicate it. If you know that the thing that you're doing right now, sign up three people fairly effortlessly, go do it, go do it, go do it. What will happen is that will slow down or your response rates will slow down. And that's when, cause right now it's new, it's fresh. So there's lots of people. Eventually there'll be less people and you're gonna have to have more strategy. And then also I always tell people, how do you become a good leader? How do you learn? And people go, well, how do you know about all this stuff? You get burnt. You go through people, you get people that are jerks, you get people that abuse you, you get people that blame you for what they didn't do. You get all this stuff and then you start to get picky about who you're willing to work with, but you have to go through it to get that way. Yeah. Like dating, you know, you go through a bunch of losers and then you meet the one, you go, this is the one because you know, but if you haven't dated anyone, the first guy shows up and kisses you on the cheek and you think he's the one, well, then you... <laughs> set yourself up for a world of problems so all right babe i'm sorry i do have to go um send me any questions or whatever and do send me where you are i think i, know. I did oh did it not did i send it to the wrong person <laughs> no wait yeah. i think you know right i was right of course yeah you're right and um yeah it's a very specific way of doing things um, so what I want you to do is for 90 days, I want you to forget everything else you know and just do what they tell you to do. Yeah. Okay. For 90 days. Then go back and start with all that other stuff. But you got to get some momentum. This is a traditional company, traditional setup. It's traditional deal. It's interesting to watch how everything goes in circles and and how you know, people would shun something and then all of a sudden it becomes the the, the thing. Yeah. It's yeah. Funny. And then I'm like, all the people that tried or came to me, I just, I didn't join them, but I'm just but like. Imagine, but imagine if any of them had done some of the things I just taught you and had relationship with you as it became hotter or sexier, as they had different presentations and things, 
they could could have showed you or they could have followed up. They would have had that connection. And right. They would have seen it with one of them. Right. One of my friends, she taught me a, a few times. And then like, I just, well, I wasn't interested in joining her team though. But that that was real. So I, when, after I signed up, I called her right away and told her I got started, but don't be mad at me. And, I t- and here's why I didn't get started with you. Because <laughs> I was like, I want us to still be friends. But she's cool. We're good. So we're kind of like accountability partners and stuff. Yeah. But you know. But you see what I'm saying? That if, if, if people had marketed well, one of them would have gotten you. Right. And, and that's the, every person that you touch, I'm looking for a longer touch. I'm not looking at yes or no. I'm looking at, great, let's be buddies. Because I'm not worried about whether they work with me today. Because as things shake down, you know, people come and go. It's a very transient industry. And mm-hmm. when you're still standing, when you're like a rock, people come to you. Right. It's, it's, it's clockwork. Take this. Got to do it again. I'm just glad I did it because I had to like mentally release the funds because mm-hmm. I knew that I had to, you know, the whole law of attraction stuff. I was like, I just have to release it. Create a vacuum, circulate. <laughs> then it will come back to me. And I, I appreciate that because now I got a better idea of how to do, how to deal with people I've never met before for versus mm-hmm. like all the people that are my, on my friends list. I'm just going to talk to them how to talk to them. But yeah, the new people, I got a better idea of how to like posture myself. So yeah. they will more likely watch the video because I'm like three days in, like, did you watch the video? Then I'm like, okay, the that's, fourth that's day I'm like, huh? But see, that's a chasing game that you set yourself. Yeah, up. yeah, and I don't want to do that because after and like after I follow up with you twice, I'm like, okay, I'm like after I follow with you twice, I was already gonna like kind of like boot you. Right, and so you're scratching them off your list. I got them on my list, my email list. The first thing I did. Yeah, I think what I did differently is with the people who said no. I did say, um, "Would you mind if I follow up with you in three months, like to compare notes?" or whatever. So I'm, I'm like, I'm not sure what it is that you're doing to create additional income, but is it okay if I follow up with you in 90 days to, you know, compare notes? And they were like, sure. And I'm like, okay. They always say sure. And then they won't take your call or anything else. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to do it now. The way you said it, I'm going to um, posture it where I can get their email or put them in my group. Cause now I haven't, I'm revamping my group, but I can just throw them in my group and my group got all this other stuff that they can opt into as well. But, yeah. um, but I don't know what's the best approach. Maybe I should put them on my group. They huh? can see you in motion. They can see you. They can see you surrounded by people. They're sniffing around. They're looking for who to follow. So when you call them back in three months or message them back, it's just you and them again. When you put them into an environment where they can see. Mm-hmm. So which what I mean, I know you got to go, but which would you think is best? I know that I, ha- I should build my email list. I, I'll be honest. I'm not, I'm not consistent in my emails. Really? But- I'm not. So we can have this, we can have a conversation later about my emails. Um, I do, I do email my people, but I'm not as consistent. Okay, as I should, so here's I one that. last thing. I, so I'll, the leave group. Last thought. I'll leave you one last thought. Uh-huh. Look at everybody who's big. Every single one of them has database that they work somehow. Yeah. It is. I don't care which one you do. You just have to have a database. You have to have a place where you can collectively talk to people. All right, so I'm going to start with my, because I'm since I'm more active with Facebook and stuff like that, I'm going to start with my group and just try to get them in there. Um, and then, you know, in between that, I be I put stuff in there for them to opt in anyway. But yeah, other than and then that, comb, comb through, it becomes like a funnel, like the group to the this to the that. It's all yeah. And then my my group also asks for your email anyway for when yeah. when you it, join. It, it's all good. Just always be collecting, capturing, communicating. Always okay. Ask. As always, I appreciate okay. that. Now I got a better idea. So these new people, they're getting on my list. They're getting in my group. They get, okay, got it. Keep them around you long enough so that they fall in love with you. Gotcha. All right, I will do you have to run. I All love right. you. I'll see you later. Bye. Thank you. Bye.